This is NASA TV. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. So good afternoon on the International Space Station. It's been an interesting day for us. We've been uh, flying around the station, collecting our uh, last minute photos, our last minute items, and getting ready to come home. So a bit of a bittersweet moment, I think, for a day for all of us. So uh, just wanted to say, uh, we all like to say a couple of words, but of course, none of this would happen if it weren't for the incredible professionals and human beings around the world that have made this space station possible, not only in the audacity of even thinking that this could happen, but in pulling it off. And then uh, at every day we interact with uh, individuals around the world that not only keep us safe, not only keep this space station running in orbit, but also allow us to help them finish up the dreams of uh, scientists around the world producing scientific data that will improve human lives for the better. And so we'd just like uh, to say a few words here as we're hopefully going to be departing the space station here in just a few hours. I just wanted to say what an honor and a privilege it's been to live in work aboard the International Space Station with this fantastic crew and also our crewmates who we served with on Expedition 66 who departed about a month ago. It's been a spectacular experience, I think really challenging, really developmental, but most of all really beautiful to form these amazing relationships and also not just with our crew up here, but like Tom said, with our crews all around the world in the flight control rooms who are there 24-7 making what we do up here possible. Uh, it's just been the honor of a lifetime to contribute to the legacy of this incredible vessel that's been up here for more than 20 years. And I think for all of us, it's really hard to, to leave. We're really looking forward to getting back to our families and our amazing support network on the ground. Uh, but I'm just so excited for you guys to have a similar experience. Uh, we've been really lucky to see the whole full range of operational and scientific operations up here. And I can't wait to contribute going forward and all of the amazing things NASA is doing alongside our international partners with the return to the moon as part of Artemis. So uh, thank you so much to the amazing team around the world for making this a possibility and to our leadership for entrusting us as caretakers of this incredible station. And I'll just echo the thanks, uh, you know, uh, almost six months ago we came up here on Endurance, uh, the maiden voyage of a SpaceX capsule, and it was a great ride, and we're looking forward to, to riding that back to Earth and to seeing friends and family. And, you know, it's uh, exciting with Crew 4 here, but also a little bit bittersweet knowing that, that them being here means it's time for us to pass the torch and, and head back to Earth. Uh, but like Kayla and Tom said, you know, thanks to just everyone. Thanks, starting with our families and our friends and our families who who not only dealt with this six months while we're up here, but have dealt with the training and all the, the, the time to get to this phase. And then the control centers, literally thousands of people around the world that on a daily basis support what we do and, and make what we do uh, even possible. Uh, the trainers that uh, got us here to begin with and taught us, uh, even though we continue to make mistakes on a daily basis, but uh, hopefully not critical mistakes. Um, but uh, the trainers that got us here that made this all possible and to the science teams, uh, ultimately that's the reason we're here is to do science. And so I think that's, uh, for me and for all of us, really the most exciting thing about being a part of such, such amazing achievements. And we look forward to seeing the papers that are published, the, the research that leads to you know, new technologies and, and saves lives. And that's the, the really exciting thing. Uh, and just honored and humbled to have been a part of that for the last six months. So I also can only echo what my dear crewmates have said. It's been like six outstanding months up here in the space station. Thanks to the, my crewmates, it's been so beautiful. Thanks to all the people on the ground that supported us, the international partners, all the, the mission control centers around the globe, but also like in Europe, um, the European Space Agency, the German Space Agency, who prepared a large part of the science complement that I was able to execute up here and also who trained me and uh, made it possible that I'm here today. 
it's um, the end of a six months mission, but I think the space stream lives on. So now is the time to uh, hand over command of the space station. And uh, just a, a couple of words about what it is meant to us to, uh, some more words, what it is meant to us to be here. You know, 100 years from now, uh, we'll be looking back on the uh, space station, the International Space Station, as certainly uh, an incredible engineering uh, accomplishment, certainly as a uh, way that uh, countries all around the world have been able to raise their technological base and have been able to produce scientific results, as we've said, to save lives and to um, improve human life. Uh, and being here a part of it, uh, another point in our uh, being a part of uh, history here has been the arrival of the first private astronaut missions so that uh, space will become open and is beginning to be open for everyone. So uh, the commercial crew program has uh, been a very much a part of our lives here as well. But I think the uh, lasting legacy of the space station is very likely to be international cooperation and a place of peace. So, Oleg, you're a very strong and experienced cosmonaut, astronaut. I know we'll be leaving the space station in good hands with you. And Ekopage 3, Jalad Vam, Bezopasny, Uspiakov, and Goradstivo Robotia, and Shesliva Astavatsia. And I relinquish control of the or command of the space station to you. I accept command. I accept command. Thank you for here. Thank you for friendship. It, it was um, in um, unbelievable time together. Tom, Kayla, Raja, and Matthias. And Matthias. It was a short period, very short. 45 minutes, 47 days, maybe. No, now, oh, brothers, sister, and um, you know. Uh, for, uh, I think, you know, uh, what um, more, more important things for us, for me, for Sergei, for Denise, it, uh, first family, our children, and um, peace between our countries, and our friendship. Thank you for friendship. And this shot here of European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer alongside on his left European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Christofredi as well as NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. He's suited up saying his last goodbyes before he ingresses the Dragon ahead of hatch closure. And you all also can see NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren, who also arrived to the space station just last week. He'll be primed to help support hatch closure operations from the space station side. And as you can see now, all four crew, three astronauts are inside Crew Dragon Endurance and they are suited up. Those suits will be worn during all the dynamic phases of flight, including undocking, departure, and the deorbit burn through splashdown. SpaceX and Houston on the big loop. Endurance, we're on step five of 4.010, and then for the ISS procedure 2.103, we are ready for 3.8. Just wanted to confirm we're going to close the Dragon Hatch. And copy that, Raja. So we are with you in your steps in 4.010 and are confirming that you do have a go to close the forward hatch.
the hatch closure this morning. And good news, hatch closure now in work. And copy that, Dragon. You'll see the uh, flight computer state change here shortly. We, that once it has changed, that will be the go for Kayla to complete some of those tasks in location one. And the hatch closed. And the hatch is closed right on the timeline at 10.20 p.m. Central Time, 11.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Now that Crew-3 is inside the Dragon, they will continue configuring Dragon ahead of an undocking later today. And with that, we have confirmation that the undocking sequence has begun. We have heard that the uh, timing issue that the crews were seeing on the Tedris clocks has been fixed. And with Dragon now getting ready to undock, let's go to Sandra Jones in Mission Control at Johnson Space Center. Thanks, Leah and Jesse. Great to hear that all is proceeding as planned tonight for undocking. As you mentioned, the umbilicals have began to retract, and right now we're working on the sets of hooks to also separate Dragon from the International Space Station. Again, there's two sets of six hooks that we'll be looking to open, so a total of 12 hooks in all. and that first set of hooks has begun to open. All hooks open and nominal. And the Crew Dragon Clearly endurance has undocked from the International Space Station. The Four stage. astronauts aboard confirmed. the orbital outpost completing their six-month mission. That undock undocking did occur at 12.20 a.m. Central Time, 1.20 a.m. Eastern Time, while the International Space Station was flying southeast over Australia. The first undocking burn also Part proceeded nominally. And with the series of departure burns now underway. Copy. And a great view of Dragon as it departs from the International Space Station. Next up will be the rest of the series of departure burns that will continue to push Dragon further from the space station. And with Dragon now successfully undocked from the space station, again that undocking occurring at 12.20 central time, 12.20 a.m. central time, 1.20 a.m. eastern time, just southeast of Australia. I'll hand it back over to Jesse and Leah and Hawthorne to walk us through the next phases of return. So some great news and great views. Uh, 
Dragon is now undocked from the International Space Station. We have already completed departure burn zero. Um, that's a short burn of Dragon's Draco thrusters. Lasts about 16 seconds long. That increases the speed that Dragon is flying away from station and sends it on a trajectory, taking it up and around the orbiting laboratory. That departure burn zero sets the Crew Dragon Endurance crew with Raja, Tom, Kayla, and Matias on their journey home, now on a trajectory to head up and over the station before additional maneuvers will change the orbital path and take Crew Dragon below and in front of the station. Dragon will autonomously accomplish that through three additional departure burns to get the four astronauts of Crew 3 well away from the space station on their way to home. What you're looking at on your screen on the left side is a view from Dragon looking at the International Space Station. And on the right side is a view from the International Space Station looking back at Dragon. <laughs> and now on the left side is the view inside Crew Dragon Endurance, looking over the seat of the commander and the pilot. You can see the screens they're using to monitor their journey back home. But again, they don't need to do make any actions uh, to continue Dragon's flight. This is all autonomous, and they use those screens to monitor the vehicle systems as well as where they are in the process. Another really cool view from the International Space Station can see Dragon in your bottom right hand corner as it is moving slow and steady away from the International Space Station. Uh, we want to make sure that the vehicle is safe um, before it begins its uh, several maneuvers to make its way back down to Earth. Uh, we have already completed burn zero, which is the first of four of the departure burns. And hearing reports that trajectory is nominal or as planned for Crew Dragon Endurance. We're standing by for that depart burn, depart burn one, I should say, in about a minute and a half. Uh, this will increase the opening rate between Crew Dragon and the station. And again, there are no hold points during this departure sequence. We see crew members arrive uh, and it, it, they stop at waypoint two or one or zero. Sometimes they're able to pass through after some go, no go poles, but it takes a le lot less time to depart than it does to arrive. So again, standing by for that next departure burn happens about five minutes after separation. So only about a minute from now. This is a cool view as Dragon is making its way out of the view. Uh, you can see how slow and steady it, it was hard to tell, but now that Dragon is out of the view, um, you can kind of see how slow it was moving away from the International Space Station. Again, as Leah mentioned, if you're just now joining us, we have completed departure burn zero, and we are now awaiting departure burn one coming up next. And you can tell it's a little bit darker outside now. That's because the Crew Dragon and International Space Station have entered an orbital nighttime. They circle the Earth every 90 minutes, so they see a sunrise or a sunset every 45 minutes. And uh, they are now flying just southwest of New Zealand about 271 statute miles over Earth. And you can see on your screen some bursts happening there. These are the burns. Uh, Dragon is using its Draco thrusters uh, to maneuver itself away from the International Space Station. That was a pretty cool view. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon, you are go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. And this is a reminder that ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid. And the dirt copies, we've got to go to dock our suits, and copy will be taking down the big loop once we're outside the ellipsoid. Can you also confirm you're taking the uh, cameras external? That is affirmative. Thanks very much, and uh, stay 
Fish and Endurance, uh, thanks for the uh, warm send-off. Good luck to Expedition 67. It was great being up there with you guys. I can't wait to see uh, the awesome work you guys continue to do on that amazing quarter of the laboratory up there. Thanks, Endurance. I uh, appreciate the kind words. We had a great time uh, handing over with you all, and uh, look forward to seeing your smiling faces on the ground. And station with that, Dragon has exited the keepout sphere. And confirmation that both depart burn zero and one are now complete. And Crew Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. That's the imaginary boundary or sphere about 200 meters in radius around the station. It's one of several safety zones. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground for some suit doffing actions. on uh, dragging the ground for some nothing actions. Okay, uh, the cameras have been taken external, so you guys are go for uh, those suit doffing actions. Just one note for you, Tom, when you are getting out of your suit, if you want to go ahead and give me a call, I have a couple of uh, things that we'd like to do uh, to inspect your umbilical just to get a better understanding of if there's anything out of config. I'll copy. Copy all. Cameras are going external, and I'll give you a call before I... I'm taking off my gloves right now, but I'll give you a call before I start suit nothing. And copy that, Tom. We can probably delay this until you're uh, fully out of the suit, so it's nice and uh, easy. Okay, copy. Give you a call once I'm out of the suit. And SpaceX, how do you hear on Dragon the Ground on the captain mic? And I've got you five by five on the captain mic. We've got you the same. That call coming from the core here in Hawthorne to the crew aboard Crew Dragon, letting them know the cameras will be off while they take off their spacesuits and get into some comfortable clothes for the journey home. As we mentioned, they have exited the keep out sphere, that 200 meter boundary around the space station. They're now about 300 meters away from the station. But before moving in out into the keep out sphere, spacecraft have to be configured where they would not cross that imaginary boundary for at least four orbits, even if the spacecraft lost all maneuvering. And we are now waiting for Dragon to exit the approach ellipsoid, or the AE, which is another imaginary shape. This time it's a three-dimensional ellipsoid measuring four by two by two kilometers in the same family as the keep-out sphere. Now one of the key differences with the AE is that vehicles outside of it, outside it, have to be on what we call a 24-hour safe free drift trajectory. Now that means the spacecraft would not cross into the approach ellipsoid for at least 24 hours, again, even if it lost all maneuvering. So we are waiting for that call out. That dragon is outside of the, the AE. That's the uh, next call out that we're waiting for. We also heard the uh core talking to Thomas Mar uh, Marshburn mm -hmm. about the umbilical on his suit. They were just talking about the umbilical that connects his spacesuit to the Dragon itself. That helps provide calm, um, cooling air while they're mm -hmm. in the suits. Of course, while they are in their more comfortable clothes for this journey home, he won't be connected to that, and they can talk through a cabin microphone instead. Yeah, and they did also mention that they can doff their suits or remove their suits. Um, so, as Leah mentioned, they are starting to get comfortable, um, and they do have, you know, a 23-hour journey on the way back home, so um, <laughs> it'll be nice to get out of those those suits, even though they are like a personal AC system for them. So. They look comfortable. <laughs> Again, we are waiting for the Dragon vehicle to confirm that it is outside of the approach ellipsoid, or the AE. 
And everything has been uh, moving pretty smoothly for Dragon so far. We are on a nominal or normal trajectory. And the next burn isn't coming up for another 42 minutes. So Dragon is still cruising on those burns, depart burns zero and one that we actually saw. I yeah. love that view. <laughs> And those burns come from the service section, Draco thrusters. Mm -hmm. um, those are used for smaller maneuvers rather than the bulkhead Draco thrusters, which are under the nose cone. Uh, those are used for the larger maneuvers like the deorbit uh, burn. And Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground, no response required. But cabin temperature is now allowed via 4.080 and the cabin is currently configured for maximum cooling. So you guys have uh, crew control as of now. Sounds like they're getting the cabin comfortable for the crew members. And the crew members can control the temperature on Crew Dragon, or they can ask the ground to control it for them. Uh, nice to have that option. Yeah, and as you mentioned, uh, we got to see the Draco thrusters. I think that was like one of the coolest views that uh, I've been able to see. Um, they, there's uh, 12 thrusters in the service section, and they're all actually pointing in different directions, and that's so that it basically has a 360 degree control um, uh, of Dragon as it's, you know, maneuvering out in space. So it was really cool to see all of them firing at the same time. <laughs> We're about halfway out of the approach ellipsoid. That's that four kilometer by two by two kilometer uh, imaginary shape. Actually, I've heard it called the pizza box because pizza of its box? yes, because of its <laughs> shape um, around the International Space Station. And so we use this and the keep out sphere for all vehicles that arrive and depart uh, the International Space Station. That helps the teams monitor um, where vehicles are, if they're ready to cross those boundaries, and eventually dock or undock with the space station. And again, we're here in Hawthorne, but teams in Mission Control Houston are also monitoring because we are still in joint operations. Uh, that happens when Dragon is inside the approach ellipsoid. So once Dragon crosses that boundary, it will come back to Hawthorne as the prime monitoring uh, location for the vehicle. But while we're close or docked to the International Space Station, we're in those joint operations. So it's been six months of these teams working together on Crew 3, but uh, they continue working together every day because we have Crew 4 on board as well. And there you can see the teams on your screen. On your left-hand screen is Mission Control Hawthorne, and on your right-hand screen is Mission Control Houston. And even though we undocked a little bit later than the initial time, uh, we had that hour-long window of undock opportunities. And so we don't expect uh, a change to the splashdown time. We're still targeting tomorrow night around 9.43 p.m. Pacific or 1.43 a.m. Eastern off the coast of Florida. There will be teams out on a boat to recover the crew after they splash down. And after splash down, they'll be removed from the vehicle. Uh, they will go through some casual medical checks and uh, then eventually board a helicopter and be brought back to land where they will board a NASA jet to fly back to see their families in Houston. Very exciting crew three on their way back home. Now NASA astronauts Roger Chari, Tom Marshburn, Kayla Barron, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer have departed the International Space Station. It will take them about 23 hours until they make their way back home to planet Earth. Next up, the crew, uh, they've already doffed their suits and they are settling in for the flight home. So as they rest up, our teams here will continue to keep an eye on the weather to ensure a safe return to Earth for Dragon and our Crew 3 astronauts.
And though our coverage here in Hawthorne is wrapping up, we're going to turn it over to the NASA team in Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-3 mission. NASA TV will stay on the air for continuous live coverage along Crew-3's journey home. So for those of you watching online on NASA's YouTube, take a look at the description below the video and you'll find the new link for the Crew-3 coast phase. Live coverage will continue at that new location shortly. But if you're watching on NASA TV, don't touch that dial. You won't notice a thing and coverage will continue. And meanwhile, SpaceX's YouTube channel will join live coverage starting roughly one hour prior to splashdown. And as always, you can find mission updates on Twitter at NASA at SpaceX and on the web at NASA.gov. Thanks for watching and may the 4th be with you.